Um, so then I guess talk a little bit about in the, in the very beginning of the book, you talk about what is a placebo and then what is a placebo effect versus a specific effect. So kind of break that down for us. It's, yeah, it's very, it's very confusing. And I, I get wrapped around the axle of this all the time <laughs> when I'm trying to explain it with people. But um, um, cause by definition, placebos have no effect. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's a lot of talk about the placebo effect uh, of surgery and how it should have a very strong placebo effect. And that's one of the arguments I make in the, in, in the book. Um, and there's some research being done at the moment, um, looking into what is the placebo effect of surgery, like, like what proportion of the improvement is due to a placebo effect. Um, and a lot of people have said, you know, it's a third or it's whatever. Um, but I, I'm, I'm veering away from that a little bit because there's confusion between a, a placebo effect and what would have happened to the patient anyway and, and confounding and other reasons for, for their improvement. And that's by far the biggest thing. So for, for a lot of what we do, yeah, there's probably a placebo effect. The placebo effects are probably overrated and they're short-lived. The fact that the patient is still really happy a year after the operation is probably because they would have been anyway. Yeah. And it had nothing to do with the placebo effect. So I'm spending less time now, uh, although we're still studying it, and I'm doing placebo studies because they're the best way of measuring the true effect of something because you've got to blind the patient from their expectations. Um, so we still need to get rid of that placebo effect, whatever it is, when we're doing scientific studies. Um, but certainly it's not as big as people think it is. And, and for the surgeons out there who say, um, well, you know, I don't care if it's a placebo effect, as long as it's making people better, I'll keep doing it. And, and that's a bad way of thinking because the surgery is not making them better. The placebo effect is not nearly as big as you think it is. And all, all of the improvement that you're attributing to the placebo effect is probably largely due to natural history or, or concomitant treatment or, uh, or other things. Yeah, that's a big, you know, in the, in the PTOT chiropractic world too, they, they talk about that too. Like, oh, well, even if it is having a placebo effect, the patient feels better. And what you're saying yeah, is that, I, well, even, even the placebo effect might not be the effect that's long lasting, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have big problems with that attitude though. It's like, you know, I've even had surgeons say to me, um, you know, I don't care if it's a placebo effect, even if it is, I'm going to keep doing it because it works. Yeah, there's a big, there's lots of problems with that, you know, philosophically, isn't there? It's, it's, um, then you are definitely deceiving either if you believe it, you're deceiving yourself, or if you don't believe it, you're deceiving the patient. You have to deceive them to get the effect. Um, you're, you're also removing really what is the only barrier between mainstream healthcare and alternatives to that. Uh, you know, alternative medicine or whatever, which which um, uses the placebo effect. I use homeopathy often as the example of of, of literally giving nothing. You know, giving yeah. no treatment, um, and and expecting people to get better and believing that when they got better, it was due to the water that you gave them that had no active ingredients in it, um, and. Uh, um, the thing I say to the, to the surgeons is that homeopathists don't wake up in the morning thinking they're going to go and swindle, uh, you know, or rip off uh, 50 patients today by selling them fake water or something. They believe it works. You know, they believe it works because their patients get better. If you embrace the placebo effect and that's the only thing you're relying on, then then you've got to be a champion for homeopathy. You know, you've got to be, you basically just remove the barrier between non-scientific medicine and scientific medicine. Um, and that's really the only difference uh, between mainstream and alternative medicine. And it's, it's out the window if we start doing things like that.